Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Welcome to this quick inspiration series, episode three, old unwanted photos. We all have them, right? Like, for example, why do I even have this photo? Why take it in the first place? I, I, I have no idea. I have a whole stack of photos here that I want to get rid of. I went through my old albums, took out all of the photos. Yes, this was in an album, okay? Don't judge. I took out all of the photos that I no longer want to keep, for example, you know, this sort of thing. Why do I need to keep this photo? I don't. So what I'm going to do now is look for sections like this and like this, for example, and just random sections like this. And I'm going to go and make stuff with it. And then I'll come back. I'll show you what I did so you can get lots of ideas. That's the plan. And I'm back. It's the next day and I made a whole bunch of stuff. Let me show you what I have. First of all, I made some tags that I then embellished with flowers on top. And this is a curtain and a swimming pool. The flowers on top are also cut out from photographs. This, you can actually see what was in the photograph. This was a swimming pool and some trees there in the background. So these are the tags that I embellished up the top. Then I made some more tags, but I actually layered them, so I'm calling them layered tags. This here is from my dress for my Deb. You can see that. Well, I know what the photo was because it's my photos, but, you know, this is a wall overseas. So, yeah, I just layered some little tags. It's a three tags layered. Here are some tiles over there. And then things like this, so little mini layered tags. And what I love about this is that you know they look almost 3d they almost look as if i applied the 3d glaze or these glossy accents it almost looks like that especially with the punched out shapes and the little the little tags the little mini ones like this one here it looks like it was glazed okay so some layered tags and then obviously you know some shapes as well in there and I really had fun making tags so I just kept making them and most of these were done with my die cut machine and then also you can see this one here I this is a punch tool and I punched out an actual thing like you can see a little possum there so that's another thing you can do you can maybe decide to use a small part of the photograph like just the face for example or you know okay next I made a whole bunch of flowers And in case you're wondering these tags, I will of course use them in my junk journals, but they could also be applied onto gifts and things like that. All right, flowers, flowers, flowers. On some flowers, like this one here, I added other pieces like this fabric flower, little mini flower, and the bread. And this here is also a photograph, the blue. So I'm just layering flowers. This is all photographs. This here, it was a night, it was a photo that was taken at night and it just had this whole section that was black and I love the contrast. I know black flower, it's not really, um, you know, there are no black flowers in nature, but I just love how this looks, you see? And you wouldn't even be able to tell that it's from photos if you didn't know that it's from photos. Like, would you be able to tell? Maybe on something like this, you might be able to tell because you can actually see well, can you? I know what this is. So, love, love, love the flowers. And they can go on any project. Journal cover, little presents, page spreads, and so on. All right, what else do we have? But these flowers want to join the party too. They belong in the, in the flower family. What I love about this is when I look at a, a certain flower, I can tell what photo it was. I know that this was a shirt that my son was wearing in one of the photos. And this is a Lego set in one of the photos. Same as this one here. Can you see the Legos? You'd never be able to tell. Here's another thing I have. This, these are little a beehive, uh, what's it called? It's a die cut shape. So I use my die cutting machine. And you can just go across any photo if you have something that cuts out most of the photo. You know, there's pretty much nothing left of it. I'll show you like this. You can rest assured that you won't be able to see that it's actually a photo. But I, I know that the chances are slim that you have this same, exactly the same die cut. But you might have something similar and it might give you some ideas. So that looks really, really cool. 
Another thing I want to mention while I'm here is that I experimented only in one of the photos and I sanded the whole thing down. So you can see how that sanded and also some of the other things that I made have the sanded photo. I didn't particularly like what happened once I sanded the photo down. But it, you know, maybe that's something you want to experiment with. All right, next thing I did is I actually used the other side of the photo. So I used the back. And I created these prints using my DIY alcohol inks using markers. I will link that video up there if you wanted to have a look. And in that alcohol inks video, we're using used up old markers. All right, back to this. So I made a whole bunch of backgrounds that now I can use in exactly the same way as these here. I'll, only I don't have to worry about people's faces and stuff like that. On the other side are the photographs, right? So when I'm using this in my project, I would make sure to either back it onto something or glue it right down. So these can be pockets and tabs and tags and many, many different things in art journals and junk journals. And I can use these uh, in my die cutting machine and so on. So, and look at all these backgrounds that I did. Uh, this, this was done in that video. Look at this. I mean, this is just, look at this. Love it. Look at this tag. Anyway, if you're going to watch the video, you're going to see how all of this is done and how the markers are made. Look at this. I just love uh, these prints. Look at this one and this one. Okay, let's move on. I also attempted to use ink pads to create this kind of effect. Uh, if you've seen my DIY ancient faux scroll video. So this is also a very easy technique and all I'm doing is using my ink pad and plopping it down onto non-stick surface, spraying with water and then smushing the paper down. But you know, it did kind of work, but not really because this is not absorbent. It's plastic, it's got a plastic coating. So I didn't really, you know, grab a whole lot of color and then also did this, you know. So that was a fail, but I like that pattern it's making. All right, that's a fail. I mean, not everything is gonna work all the time. Then I did some random things like this, borders and like little nameplate tag. It really depends on what sort of die cuts you have, labels like this. And then this one here is another example of that sanded photograph. It has a bit of texture to it. I mean, it's not bad, you know, I don't love, I don't love it. Another thing I did is again using the backs of photographs and I put it through my die cut uh, embossing folder I should say and I have some embossing happening on there you see and that embossing looks so wonderful on white but then I went ahead and I distressed it a little bit with my distress ink and just glued down some pieces here this is just uh, this is wallpaper cardstock and then this is a stamp and glued down some bling and same here I mean, you can do this type of thing on any old cardstock, but if you have old photos that you're going to throw away anyway, why not use the back? Plus, it has a nice finish. It's kind of, you know, it's not paper. It has some sort of a coating at the back. And then this is what I did with one of them. And I made that into a pocket. I mean, you can see that there, but I don't, I'm going to do a quick Google search. All right, so quick Google search told me that Kodak started as a company in the 19th century. So it could, it is, you know, you can consider it vintage. It filed for bankruptcy 11 years ago, so it's no longer around. So I feel okay about using the backs of my photographs that have, I don't even know if you can see that, you probably can. And I made this kind of a vintage uh, journal. Let me just quickly show you. On the inside have some lace and all different types of paper all the kind of stuff we do in our junk journals right and that's my embellishment at the front and all that i have in there is just a little tag that can be journaled on now where am i going to fit this one thing i did find though when i was cutting down my photographs is the lack of color so there's a lot of blue and grays and darks and stuff not much yellow which is why I had to opt for using other materials that I have in my possession. So that is one thing I, I noticed. All right, so I'm gonna use these in my, look, the three of them together, it looks really nice. So like I said before, if you're using the actual photograph, 
you might be able to cover the person in the photo so you can maybe do something like this and you have this embossed folder around or perhaps something like this you know why not and then you can have let's see how I glue down these little bling pieces the little pearls you know you can do that sort of thing to take away from the actual photo but in any case there's that idea here are some more examples of me using my embossing folders and creating these backgrounds so i really love this idea we're not using the actual photograph and what i was planning to do i'll give you this idea i had in my mind because you might be able to develop it further the reason why i started doing this using my embossing folders is because i wanted to cut little sections of like look at this girl here look at her dress so what I wanted to do is emboss, you can see that when I turn it, emboss the photo and then cut out sections of the photo, like the dress, but not the face, right? And then have little squares or inches. I don't know, do you know about inches? You remember that? Well, in any case, so basically what I was wanting to do is cut down tiles. Let's call them tiles and you cut them down two by two, which this isn't by the way, but you have all of these tiles two by two inches or three by three or one by one, which is inches, one inch square, right? And then you can do all sorts of crafts with your inches, like tiles, you know. I love the idea, but then I couldn't find a lot of photos that have a lot of color in them. So, oh, for example, this photo here, you know, there's really, all of the colors are very muted and dark. So there's a whole lot of gray, not much, yellow and pink and orange and stuff like that so i abandoned that idea but then i realized that i really really love the back and this of course also depends on the type of embossing folders you have but there is an idea and a lot of these photos like this one for example it has a bit of writing there however the rest of the photograph is clear so i can just use that section for a pocket in a journal this one here as well, just a little bit of writing there, and I can use that. So I really thought that was great. Rather than throw them out, we can craft with them. And then last but not least, I pulled out my punches. These are all of the punches that I have. I love this one, the little tag. Don't ask me where I got it from. I got it from an op shop. Well, now you don't have to ask me because I told you. And then I created a whole lot of little punch out shapes. Butterflies, hearts. These are all from a Christmas photo and the yellow. I managed to find a tiny little bit of yellow. And then, of course, some more flowers. Then I did some of these label type things. They can go on journal covers and things like that. Pretty cool, that one. And then I did a whole bunch of some other random stuff. I'm only showing some examples here. Circles, of course. And then tabs. I have this tab, tab a little punch thing. And then that goes to the side of the page like this. That's pretty cool. I mean, you can just fold a piece of photograph in half and staple it on. And then this keyhole, here's that Christmas photograph. So if you just cut a little piece of the photo and you fold it down, and then you can cut a little notch up here. You see that? Uh, I'm not doing a great job, but I think you get the point. Like you're making little shoulders, you see, just there. I'm sure you would do a better job than what I'm doing right now, but just to demonstrate. And then you staple it to a page and you have a little tab in a journal and you can have a whole bunch. And whew, I did a whole lot of stuff and I still have a whole bunch of photos left and I actually threw out a whole bunch. And you know what? I kept this one. So it gets to live another day so please let me know what did you think and also do you have some more ideas let us all know so we can all be inspired i hope you feel inspired now i just want to show you this journal this is one chunky monkey fully embellished journal and i want to announce my next video which is using magazine images only to embellish an entire journal that video was supposed to be today but it i'll tell you exactly what happened this happened i actually did film that video and then i opened the drawer and saw my old photos and felt this huge inspiration to make this video even though i've had those photos sitting in that drawer waiting for quite a while 
and I really hope that you feel just as inspired by this video as I was while I was filming it or rather when I was making all this stuff. All right, thank you so much for watching. Get your magazines ready and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.